Can we just forget what episode yeah. it is? Yeah. It's a special episode. Yeah. We don't know. I don't know what to put on the heading. I'll figure it out. Hello! Welcome to the Jumpstart Podcast. This is our summer episode, and the Jumpstart Podcast is the place where we slather aloe vera ointment on the sunburn of your children's ministry. Yeah, sunburn being a good thing because you're outside in the sun, which is a little thing. bit, a little bit. It can burn a little bit right now. This is a special episode today. Yep. It's, it's not just you and me, Brent. It's not. And I am, of course, Brent Colby, along with my dear friend. Dan Matier. And with us today, we have the one and only Reverend Dr. Josh Ziefel. Woo! Josh, thank you so much for being here. How's it going? Going great. How are you guys? Good. No, we've had a good day today. We were actually hanging out a little bit. We we're talking about Fusion, our children's ministry leadership conference that we have going on. November. It's going to be great. Yeah, 14, 15, and 16 here in Renton, Washington. So uh, again, keep your eyes peeled and ears open. We'll get you more information about that in the near future. If you're look, viewing from out of town, book the flight today because it's going to be well worth it. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. So Josh is actually uh, the professor of student ministries at Northwest University, among other things. Uh, he's a graduate of Princeton Theological Seminary and has his doctorate, I believe, in church history. Is this that's correct? Right, that's right. So we thought, Josh is here. He's really smart. So let's ask him some questions about church history and as it relates to children's ministries. So first question, just very broad, mm-hmm. uh, Josh. Uh, in, 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 is you are a historical uh, church guy and we're children's ministry guys. Let's meet the two together. How did this whole thing start? Where does children's ministry come from historically? That's a great question, Dan. Um, really goes back to the beginning. Uh, and, and, you know, the way that I like to explain it is, is this. You know, we, at some point, someone decided to follow Jesus, you know. And that person... You know, the, the first disciples, and then, of course, after the day of Pentecost, the earliest Christians in the church, all of these are making adult, mature decisions of their own free will. You know, they, they've reached a, a point where they can make decisions for themselves. And so the initial generation of Christians, they're, they're all adults. They're all, you know, our age or older, or at least in their ad, sort of teenage years. Um, the big question then is what happens to the next generation? Hmm. Uh, what happens when these people who had this powerful and transformative experience... Uh, with Jesus Christ, what happens when they, when they value that experience so much, they value the, the salvation they've received, what happens when they want to, when they have children of their own, and they want their children to have that same kind of experience? Well, they can't have that same kind of experience unless they invite their children to go live in the world for a while and come back, and that's never, never been really seen as a, except maybe amongst the Amish, never yeah. really been seen as a, a, thing, a, a right? viable yeah. option. So the idea is then how do we minister our children, raise them up in the faith, train them, disciple them, pre-disciple them, whatever we want to call it. Hmm. How do we do that? And so uh, it, at its very seed and at its very basis, it's just as simple as that. You know? that's, that's a good perspective, actually. Yeah. I like that. Now, the early church, of course, started in Israel. So we have a very specific yep. culture. We have uh, Jesus and his ministry kicked off. And, of course, we read the book of Acts, and we have the story mm-hmm. of this early church kind of unfolding yeah. in front of our eyes. How much of like what we do in church culture has connections to kind of those early days in ministry with kind of the culture of, of origin for the early church. Yeah. Again, a lot of what, um, especially within the, um, the evangelical and more so the Pentecostal charismatic side of things, uh, there, there's still a lot of um, sort of first generation Christianity taking place. In other words, we're not, we're not like a, a 2,000 year established church like the Roman Catholic Church or hundreds of years like Lutherans or Presbyterians. So a lot of new people that are coming to our churches and praise God for this are because they are you know, having a moment of salvation in their own lives. Yeah. And that really echoes, of course, much of what's going on in the New Testament. Right. I mean, Paul was writing letters to churches of people that he was able, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to lead to Christ. You know, and much, much of the instruction we see in the New Testament is not, or almost none of it is directed towards children, but it's directed um, uh, especially towards these early sort of first generation Christians in their family. Right. You know, converting from pagan, a pagan lifestyle, or converting from a, a Jew, Judaism or the Jewish faith. The interesting thing is, and if I could just add this, is you see this kind of repeated again at different times throughout church history. Yeah. And so early church, adults become Christians, want to look to the next generation. Um, 1500s, Martin Luther, John Calvin come along, see something's wrong with the way the church developed, want to sort of hit the reset button. Hmm. Well, they do that. A lot of people that are adults of their own free will choose to follow them in this new teaching. But then there's a the question, how do we pass this on to the next generation? John Wesley, you see some of the same things. 
um, in, the, in, the, in the Pentecostal movement, in American Christianity, you see the same kind of thing. I had this powerful transforming experience with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Now I have kids. How do I help them to come into contact with the same kind of God that has powerfully transformed my life? Right. Yeah. So I know our fellowship, the, the network of churches we've all chosen to associate with are Assemblies of God mm-hmm. churches. The history runs about 100 years. Yeah, only about 100 years. Right? Yeah. So that's very, in the, the spectrum of church history, like... Just a very, very thin small, slice. Yeah, absolutely. So what are, um, are there any connections you make to um, that experience that the some of the God people, the Pentecostals maybe, or evangelicals have made that some choices they've made um, as far as passing on their experience to, you know, later generations? Yeah, you know, what's interesting, um, and I don't, don't know if this directly answers your question, but what's interesting is that the rise of, which is, di- which is a different kind of thing with the Pentecostal or charismatic movements, again, going back only about 100 years, um, previous to about the year 1900, 1920, there, was, there almost was no such thing as adolescence. And hmm. so you basically went from being a child to being not quite a full member of society, right. but, you know, you were working on the farm and then you were married when you were in your teen years and then that was it you were an yeah. adult so if you're like 10 um, years old you don't have a job yet you're kind of lazy <laughs> probably like, yeah, what's yeah. your career son what, come on get, get off your butt now. what are you doing playing board games no. um so what, what's interesting there it's a little different than some other generations yeah. is as the as the assemblies for instance or as the pentecostal movement was growing through its own infancy was about the right about the same kind of time in america at least hmm. that this idea of adolescence which was first conceived of only about only as about a year and a half pause period between childhood and yeah. adult, which has now grown to be Upwards yeah. of maybe twenty years right. that we you know we don't think someone's out of adolescence until maybe they're thirty five or something right. you know yeah. um, and so what's interesting there is that we're both this uh, Pentecostal youth ministry and children's ministry is taking place in the midst of that and so right. older things like a catechism for instance which um, uh, people who are familiar with older churches more liturgical churches might be more familiar with a set list of questions and answers helping students get a good grasp on a bunch of doctrine. We, both because of our rejection of what early Pentecostals thought was sort of, I don't know, stilted or old school Christianity, and also because this adolescence was emerging as a new thing, I think, we sort of skipped over that step. Um, Interestingly, we were talking earlier, something we do like a junior Bible quiz where students are memorized, or children and and, and young people, teenagers, are memorizing scripture and then being asked to give it back, and the more exactly memorized, the better. Yeah, um, we're actually doing something similar there to, to that. But right. it's you know, like for instance, the Westminster Catechism of Faith coming out of the 1600s in England. It is a series of questions and answers. In the shorter catechism, the first question is, "What is the chief end of man? Well, to glorify God and enjoy Him forever." And it goes on like this for I don't know 150 questions. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I don't know how many of our children's ministries are structured like that. Dan, you guys yeah. have that. Uh set up it we don't but we do have junior bible quiz which is actually remarkably yeah. similar to that i don't know whether the chief end of man is that one of the junior bible quiz questions <laughs> I, I think it might be yeah yeah well I, that's interesting you know so you know we've kind of recreated our own catechism in that form yeah. i think we have I, I think we assume that kids who grow up through our children's ministries graduate will be will be able to answer maybe a a more limited set hmm. of yeah. questions and you know maybe we should raise our expectations a bit about what these kids can and cannot pull off as far as just learning yeah you know there's been um, uh, someone I knew back in, in New Jersey where I'm originally from in a youth ministry setting said that they really admired some of the, the structure of a type of catechism thing at least in a youth ministry setting what I didn't tell my friend was that for many churches today that have a catechism or uh, traditional churches and I went to a mainline seminary so I have a number of Presbyterian friends or Lutheran friends the system is kind of broke there though hmm. because while maybe we've erred on the side of not requiring students to understand or memorize much doctrine at all in their situation, students only expect that once I memorize a certain number of things and pass a certain number of tests, then I don't have to go to church anymore. Yeah. And it doesn't... You've finished. You know, pierce, pierce through into these things. So that's... It's this tension, you know, because on the one hand, we know that our faith is about who, in, in whom we trust. But we trust in... As we trust someone, we know more about them. You know, and that's true whether you're 80 or 15 or, or 7 years old, you know. Yeah. We don't... Um, the goal in all of this, whether it be children's ministry, youth ministry, or whatnot, is... Uh, helping people, um, well, to use the classic sort of cliché phrase, take ownership of their own faith. And then you need knowledge and trust and experience, and all of that works together. For yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good stuff. Uh, but we want to get to know you a little bit more. Okay. Uh, is it okay if we ask you a few questions that are a little bit lighter in nature? Well, 
Yeah, okay. That's okay. Thing. Now, <laughs> let me. We made a yeah. list. I got to grab. Okay, the list grab the first. list. Grab the list. Uh, uh, now, Josh, these are just a few kind of off the cuff. Uh, kind of choose one or the other. Um, uh, a few different things like this. So uh, here we go. Are you ready for this? Uh, I guess so. I choose one or the other. Choose one yes. or the other for this first few. Okay. The, the first one is uh, is this. Would you rather live with nine cats <laughs> or live with a hamster in your pocket? <laughs> hamster in pocket. Would you rather eat a taco or a burrito? What's in the burrito? Well, what's I think in that answered it for us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, would you rather have coffee or coffee? Because I mean, it's the Northwest. So you really don't have much choice here. Uh, I'm a tea drinker. Oh. Uh, okay. okay. Well, okay, how about okay. this? Would you rather go out to a movie or to a sporting event? Movie. Uh, would you rather ride a pony to work every day or work selling ponies? I think we've stumped him on this, this one. This is good. This is a tough question. <laughs> My whole thought with this, this selling ponies is just there'd be a lot of smell. So I, I just want to ride the pony. Yeah. Okay. Get away from a the little smell. less smell. Okay, that's so good. That's good. Get away. Yeah. Round you one. Get to keep your gig at the yeah, uh, yeah. school too. <laughs> too. That's good. That's yeah. Okay. okay. Round one. Uh, you're good. A plus. Okay. Next round is of course a little word association. Ready for this? So what do you want to do? We're gonna say a word. Okay. And you must respond with a single word answer, and it needs to be the first word that comes to your mind. Okay. Again, this is really going to help us okay. get, to know, we'll get to know not just the surface level, Josh, the but depth. The, the deep down inside, Josh. You ready? This is a little scary. scary for okay, me. here we go. <clears throat> Pumpkin. Pie. Discipleship. <laughs> Puzzle. <laughs> Puzzle. Peace. Pony. Ride. <laughs> Tomatoes. Potatoes. Pizza. Sausage. Birkenstocks. German. I'm stumped now. Yeah. No, okay, good. last that's one. Good. That's last good. one. Good? No, that's okay, good. I think you last... passed that. Can we go that. back to something, by the way? This is something I think your podcast here is yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cats. Do you guys own cats? No. You surprised me with the hamster in the pocket. Did you, I must do, say, do you own cats? I don't own a okay. cat. People, research this. Wait, do we need a close up for this? Like a... Yeah, people research this. Okay. Yeah. Cats have, like, in their stomach, this bacteria that can affect your brain. They've infected mice with this, and it removes their. Their, their natural fear of cats because the bacteria can only reproduce inside the cat's stomach, right? So I think people with cats, they go crazy because it's taken over their brain. So oh. stay away from the cats. Okay, that's, that's good. Listen, research it, look it up. Yeah. It right explains there. the hamster in the pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I would much rather, I would, I, would, I would keep a hamster on my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know? last question, last question. They we may edit that out. <laughs> the conspiracy is alive. No, you're fine, you're yeah. fine. <laughs> what is one thing that you think every children's minister should know about youth ministry? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think, I think, uh, in, in all seriousness, uh, talk about cats and hamsters aside. I think the one thing that uh, I would say that every children's minister would need to know about youth ministry is, is this, um, and it's very simple and kind of maybe cliched and overdone, but it's it's always worth keeping in mind. Is that and that is we're on the same team. Hmm. We really are. That's good. You know, one of the things that we I have the privilege of doing as the sort of the overseer of student ministries, children's ministries, and youth ministries at Northwest is be able to work with people like Brent and Dan. Uh, that come in and teach some of our courses, that I am interacting with um, uh, people who are uh, feel called to work with adolescents, people who feel called to work with children. Um, on an educational level, helping students, and on a theological level, helping students understand we're all on the same team. You know, it's been said that of youth ministry, for instance, which is my specialty, that youth ministry is not a separate kind of thing. Youth ministry is ministry, hmm. just like any other kind of ministry. Children's ministry is ministry, just like any other, kinds of, any, any other kind of ministry. Knowing that will help us to remind us at a big level, at a, at, a, at, a, at a high level, that we're on the same team. But then practically, as you're working with, um, whether you're in a, in, a, in a church where you have people on staff that are filling these roles or volunteers, knowing that you're on the same team and then acting like that. Um, not so it's like, well, I don't have to deal with that. They're kids. Or, well, passing them off now to the youth pastor. But trying to find intentional ways of making sure that there's, there's these connections here. Hmm. Um, I, th I think this is essential both for um, living out what it is to be, means to be in the kingdom of God, painting a picture for the whole church and the students what it means to be in the kingdom of God, and, quite frankly, um, quite frankly, um, how do I best want to phrase this? Uh, providing students the best experience, the best training, the best discipleship in, seamlessly uh, from, from one type of ministry setting to another.
So, oh. you know, such that the sixth, the fifth or sixth grade children's pastor and youth pastor are doing the same thing yeah. and doing that dance yeah. together. Now, the twelfth grade, you know, youth pastor and the second grade children's pastor are still working together in some ways. It just mm -hmm. looks a little different. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. That's good, good stuff. Well, hey, thank you to our guest Joshua Zeefel. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We were good getting to know you, and we got some good stuff. Thank you to for watching. Email us at cmjumpstart at gmail .com. We value those things. We do. And Josh, is there a way that if people want to follow you or get in touch with you, they can do that? Yeah, um, feel free to, uh, you can check out my blog, actually. I'm on hiatus for the summer, but there's stuff on there. Um, it's just my name, joshuazifel.net. Um, you can check out some things that I've written there, uh, both sort of daily postings and also some articles and things that I've posted. And my contact information is on there as well, so feel free to do that. Cool. Otherwise, we'll see you this summer at cmjumpstart.com. I look forward to connecting with you guys again soon. All right. <laughs> Perfect. That was the best part. <laughs> it's valuable. I meant to be cutting earlier, but we didn't know the case is true. I read it online. I'm <laughs> scared now. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't have a chat. I don't have a chat. We had cats growing up, though, so I may be susceptible to that. And so I every time I have a phone thing about a cat, push it away. Oh, yeah. No, I think Anna killed me. Everyone.